Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You tune in to another edition of the Sports Shop 27. I'm your host, Jermaine Cota. And to the far right, my co-host, Kevin Johnson, KJ. And today's special guest, That's right. we have former 1981 national champion defensive tackle from Clemson University. Yeah, man. He's the guy that gave William Perry the nickname Refrigerator Perry. Free. That's right. Got a Hall of Famer in the house. Ray Brown. What's, What's up, Ray Brown? Brown? What's up? What's up, fellas? How y'all doing today? We doing good. Doing good, doing man. good. Glad to have you on the show. Glad to have you on the show. For the people that don't know you, Ray, let them know where you're from and a little bit about your background. Well, it's not too much. I'm, I was born in the, the foothills of uh, Georgia. Okay. Uh, and uh, came to South Carolina because they had a man shortage. So when I got out of high school, <laughs> came on over here to play for the University of Clemson and lead them to that now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, you, okay. Hey, you the man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so Ray. <laughs> no, no, I just all joking aside. No, I'm from Rome, Georgia. Okay. And I had the fortune enough to, you know, to have the opportunity to play at Clemson uh, back in '79. Uh, Coach Ford recruited me, and and uh, and it's been a wonderful journey. Cool, that's good. Right. Hey, hey Ray, I want to ask you a question, man. So, uh, what age you started playing football, and was it your first love? No, yeah. Well, uh, I tried to play baseball. But a, a friend of mine threw me a curveball, and my reflexes were too short. It hit me in the, hit me in the chin Ooh. with that ball, so I figured I better leave that mess alone. So I can <laughs> <ain't lying> <laughs> hey, baseball hurt. <laughs> I, that was I was probably about eight or nine back then, and, you know. So I I figured that you know I better leave that kind of stuff alone. But I like to swing that bat though. But yeah, okay. One fun, so we'll, but I thought that's sort of like Jermaine, you know, getting thrown out from left field. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I ever got thrown out from left field, Ray. Well, I mean, I mean that's yeah. what I did a little back history on you, Jermaine. You know, I saw okay. <laughs> hey, so, so what position did you play when you played baseball, Ray? Well, then when I was going to be a pitcher, you know, so a friend was working oh. to show me how to. To throw a curveball and uh, back yeah. there, I grew up and I so he, I was trying to work on that and he threw it to me, but my hand and eye coordination wasn't you know in sync at the time and the baseball hit me in the chin and I said that was enough for that I didn't want to mess up his pretty face of mine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Because, you so know, what age did you start playing football? It was age, it, around the same time, eight or nine. Okay. Yeah, I went out, and uh, so I wanted to play uh, that age group, but they told me I was too big, so I had to kind of jump up and play the junior midget league. Oh. oh. So, so so I was a young man playing with, you know, a little older, the 12-year-old, the 12 year old, but I was like nine at the time. Yeah, that made you oh. better, though. Yeah, it did. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I mean, you grow up on hard knocks, you don't know nothing but hard. <laughs> so, so what position did you play? Um, your first year playing football? Oh, I, I, I was always a lineman. I was defensive end, tight end, and, ta and ta offensive tackle, defensive tackle. With back then, you played both ways, so you didn't leave the field if you yeah good enough to stay out there. You stayed out there. Okay. So, so what was yeah. Rome? What was Rome, Georgia, like in the 1970s when you were in high school uh, well, playing? Playing football, it was it was Rome, Georgia was probably you know at, at that time we were sort of into the civil rights march and movement and stuff back then, and we was on the onset of what we are now. Uh, I, in high school, in my last two years, we didn't lose a game. Wow! We, oh, okay, that's impressive. We're back to back state champions. You know, I didn't know what it was losing to my freshman year. Wow. That sounds good. So, um, so who was the guys responsible for developing your your um hand, your feet, and hand coordinate hand not coordination, um, uh, you know, on defense? Well, I mean, the hand eye coordination, as far as football is concerned, 
was always there because that's that's there's a combination of of putting boxing a little a little kung fu in there and uh and just your regular foot dancing skills <laughs> yeah I, I heard you were a great dancer well uh, <laughs> I, uh yeah i mean if you call that part dancing now i don't know if they they, they were that kind of dancing. We, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it went too hard, you know, because, you know, we was more of the bump and grind, slow drag. <laughs> okay. It ain't all that jumping around like y'all do now, David, all that spinning on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we, we, we believe in holding a woman close to your heart and let her rest her head on your shoulders. Yes, yeah. sir. Hey, so, so what, made, what made you play football? Was it somebody in the and the family you looked up to, or it was somebody in the pros, or what? Well, uh, no, at the time, I mean, it was foot at, at the area that you grew up in. You had baseball and you had the football, and uh, like I say, it wasn't. I didn't grow up on the uh, the good side of the track. You know, you try to have uh, that avenue of going. It wasn't. I football was. It was a relief. I, you know, I my my idea at the time was. I was gonna grow up and work in the in the either puckwood or either cotton mill, and and you know, wow. you know that was that was my mindset. That's what we had. That's what you had to look forward to, and wow. you know, football was just something to do after school and play. It's a at, hobby. That you first started out, but then as I got older, I saw it as an avenue to be able to travel and see see the world, so to speak. If you didn't join the service or anything. So that was that's what I took that in stride and did it that way, uh, and I was fortunate enough to uh, win a scholarship to uh, Clemson University and and uh, finish school, you know, get my degree there also, and go on in life and raise a family, and now I'm on the uh, sunny side of life. Cool. So, so Ray, I got a question so, for you. Um, in those development stages, we were playing defense. And you were um, in high school. What were some of the things you did on the off season to get yourself prepared for the season when you were well, in the gym? Well, I was, uh, you know, back then, you know, if you played different sports. So when football was over, we played basketball. I was, a, I was either strong forward or center in basketball. Uh, okay. I, I did high jump and track. So it, so it really didn't have a downtime. <laughs> So I did the high jump, did the shot put, and uh, you know those right there. I wasn't no speedster. I didn't run the hundred, but I could do the uh, four forty. Dang. Okay. So you played three a total of three sports. Yeah. In high school, right? Football, I, basketball, I, and track. Right. Mm -hmm. So cool. And did you guys make it in the playoffs or in the finals um, in all three of those sports? I know you said you had. Couple of state well, championships but in football. State champions in football back to back, and uh, we would have been three years in a row. Uh, but the last two years, we, we won it back to back state champs. Uh, I was at that time, I was Mr. Georgia uh, when I what? came out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, so, uh, Mr. So, Georgia. <laughs> so I was defensive player of the year for the state of Georgia. Uh, at that time, just reflecting back on <laughs> some of them has been such a long time ago. But I would, I would think it was a uh, character building back then because, like I say, I was, I could have went either way. I had friends that 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 make that decision when you come to the crossroads whether you want to do certain things, you know, to try to better yourself, or you want to do certain things that other people wanted you to do at that time, and. Lucky enough, I made some of the right decisions to, you know, to keep my head above water. You know, I ain't saying I was no uh, angel by no means, uh, because I believe an eye for an eye, two for a tooth, you know. Okay. So, but, but I tried to, I made some, you know, right decisions uh, as I look back over it, you know, thinking about it before we was reflecting, before we came on air, that, uh, you know, I have a lot of friends that wind up in prison and in the graveyard just from some of those same decisions that, you know, they made the wrong decision. 
Okay. So I tried to make it an effort to motivate the young children, whether they're mine or yours or anybody that come across that, you know, try to motivate them, whether they have a father figure in the home or not, whether it's a little girl or a little boy, you know, just to give them, inspire them because uh, you didn't have that back then. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So for, for you, uh, sports was your way out and uh, I guess away from, you know, going on, staying on the wrong side of the tracks. And well, also yeah. you saw that you had a lot of potential to grow but in not, those areas. But Go not ahead. on the sports side of it. I mean, academics, period. Once you got, once mm -hmm. you got into junior high and you had teachers and, and adults in your life that, you either listened to what they had to tell you or you didn't. So you had to make those decisions at that time. So, you know, I was, you know, on the flip side, other than sports, I mean, I was in the drama club. I was on, you know, did the debate in the club, uh, things sure. like that in school. Uh, okay. I mean, you know, you try to, you, just, you know, I was a boy scout. Uh, you try to do certain things that, you know, people expose you to. And football just happened to be, you know, that avenue that I was good at, which I used, you know, I rode that horse till I couldn't ride it no more. Yes, sir. Cool. That's what's up. So um, you, you're Mr. Football in Georgia or Mr. Georgia. For those that don't know, uh, that means the best player in the state and also defensive player of the year. So right. um, for the, everybody that's watching, I need y'all to subscribe, hit the like button and share with your friends. Yeah, I guess yeah. back then I was Southern. I was in the top 20 Southern 100 players in the whole nation when I came out. Mm -hmm. So that's, mm -hmm. that, you take the whole United States Southern magazine, I was listed in their top 100, and I, I think I was around 25th or something like that out of 100 players across the whole nation. So that was, uh, you know, I, I, I used that as a catalyst to, uh, you know, as a stepping stone, you know, and, and used it until I came to Clemson and with Ford, you know, we, he was a young coach at the time and he could relate to, you know, I mean, he had his hands full. I mean, it wasn't like we had a, uh, a team full of, full of angels, like I say, you know, you had coaching is a hard sport. You know, you got to mend different attitudes different walks of life and stuff. It's not easy like they have it nowadays. You're right. You're right. You know, you yeah. take opportunities and, and we live by just a few rules. You didn't embarrass yourself, your family, or Clemson University, and all was well. Okay. Go ahead, KJ. Hey, did, did, you, did you get recruited by any other schools besides Clemson? Oh, yeah. I, like I said, I was in the I was in the nation top 100. It was, I had my choice to go anywhere, but I, I, I narrowed it down to Clemson and Georgia and uh, Florida State at the time, and uh, and I chose Clemson. Okay. And, and when I came here, I was one of the first ones to play uh, five years as a uh, you know because I was registered. I had a hardship case my sophomore year, but I also had started so. That gave me to be the first one to be able to start five consecutive seasons. Wow, that sounds great, man. So, so I, you know, at, back then, I guess what happened, I had a case of, uh, oh, what they call viral meningitis, almost killed me. Uh, but so I had a loss of, oh, anywhere from 50 to 70 pounds in just about a month's time, was walking wow. dead partially paralyzed so we'll come back after that you know like i say when you have life changes like that you, you get the different things stages in life you have to you have to learn that you have to have things to fall back on you got to have more than a plan a a plan b you got to go to different aspects of, of things yeah. exactly that's right yep hey, man that <laughs> sounds real that sounds real inspiring uh ray brown um, just like I said, man, we appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, you, you lived yeah. a full life, man. You had, you accomplished a lot real fast and got a lot of wisdom. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, when you get to Clemson on your visit, what stood out at Clemson versus the other schools? Good question, man. Uh, the opportunity to, to play uh, the family atmosphere that we had. You know, you, you came here. 
the fan base, the community base uh, that we did back then. We used to have what we call uh, like family day uh, right at the beginning of the season where the players would divide up and the community would bring in players for that day to have dinner and stuff at home. So it was sort of like getting you acclimated to a family away from your, your original family. So it made you make Clemson yeah, for a home. And uh, so, you know, as we came to Clemson, it was an opportunity to, like I say, to play as a freshman. Uh, the the camaraderie of the recruits that we all who came at the time and just the you know, the coaching staff, like I say, Coach Ford was a younger coach who could relate to us, who, you know, was not too much older than we are at the time. Yeah. So, was, uh, but you you took that togetherness and and the hardship that you know that you had at the time, and it kind of brought a bond you know that you you tie you into into things when like I tell you know, people you can it's it's you have opportunities in life and whether you and what you take those opportunities and what you do with them is what's going to determine how successful you are. You're right. You're right. Cool. So you accept you accept the uh, offer to go to Clemson. Who's the first teammate you can remember that embraced you as a freshman coming in the door? <laughs> well, he's not long. He's uh, <laughs> yeah, we had a number of ones. Uh, you know, I had you know you got you had my first roommate was a guy of uh, I want to say it was. Um, Washington, I think it was, I want, he was out of Atlanta. I can't remember the exact high school, but he was a, he was a character. Then this guy, he inspired me because playing football in high school. And you imagine after the game on the field, you get shot. And uh, he told me that story. What? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's real right there. He got shot. I think it was hit in the leg or the side. I mean, he still, you know, it wasn't a life-threatening injury, but here you is after you playing a high school game. Like I say, you you meet people, you learn stories from different people that help develop your lifestyle. But yeah, his name was Damon McCurdy, uh, out of Atlanta. I want to say it was Booker T. Washington High School, like you okay, know, maybe. <laughs> but okay. Uh, but he, me and him, was roommates, and he told me that story, and I said, well. You know, you don't know how lucky you think you have it bad, but it's always somebody else to have it a little better than you do. So you just have to yeah. head up and keep going forward because, uh, yeah. you know, and that's that's what made it real for me. That was my freshman year, and I was like, for real? And uh, But like I say, he had issues and stuff that he had to, you know, things he had to work through, but just coming from that type of uh, but background and stuff and fight through to even get to Clemson is a monumental task in itself to have that happen. But he, uh, him and I had, you know, as I went through Clemson, you know, we, you had, you have other players and stuff, you know, James Robinson, we in the vein, you know, the fridge, we all, we come, you get that bond together, you know, you pull together, you got Jimmy Scott, Dan Bennis, you know, Danny Triplett, you know, Johnny Rim, but you know, just people who went on to do different things in life that that made you. But what what really makes a team is not only just your teammates that that you play on the field. You also got the support staff. You know, you got the trainers, the managers that that you you draw a bond with them. Also, you know, you, you know that mm -hmm. people that that at that time we was all in it to win it. And when you when you come together like we did back then, and that's how we was able to go on and and um, after going uh, six and five the year before, and uh, come around and win the national championship. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so uh, how was it playing D line on the college level, right right beside the fridge, man? You know, I well, watched a couple of his highlights. Well, you know, you know, as I as I tell tell them when you come from high school, you can be a high school hero, but the first day of college, you're just a zero. <laughs> yeah. So you know, we didn't, you know, and that's that's where we had to take that. You know, we had to 
had to come and and do it that way. Uh, so you you know when you you know high school days was high school days, but once you would come school come to college, that's a whole different thing. So you have to have to uh, put all those things behind you and have to prove yourself again because everybody who comes is a hero mm -hmm. in, their own, in their own means. That's right. Yeah. So. <laughs> so. Yes, sir. Mr. Ray Brown, for those who's watching, subscribe, like on YouTube, follow us on Facebook. Uh, we have right. legendary uh, defensive tackle, 1981 national champion, Ray Brown. Um, That's right. So, Ray, uh, playing at Clemson next to the fridge and the defense that you guys had in uh, 1981. Talk about the uh, free-spirited and how many uh, athletes, and I guess you could say almost all Americans you had on your team on that uh, 81 national championship team. Well, we had, oh, I'd, I'd say at least over 10 of them that left there to go on and play uh, at the next level. Uh I would say in and that during that period of time, the years that I was there, you know, we was, you know, Coach Ford was establishing that was one of the, one of his goals as to get players to go to the next level, and like I say, they come from all walks of life and all different different stories, but he gave you the opportunity, like he said, you, you have the opportunity to change your life, and uh, and that's what we did. Okay, cool. All right. Um, the bowl games that you guys played in, talk about some of those experiences as well. Oh, uh, yeah. The first bowl we played in, that I played in, is, is, uh, representing Clemson University, was the uh, Peach Bowl. That was back, that was in Atlanta, Georgia, against Baylor, uh, playing as a freshman, uh, getting compared to Hugh Green, uh, who was an outstanding defensive end from Pittsburgh at the time. Yeah. Uh, get compared to people like that, uh, you know, that was a good, but I tell you, that was one cold night. Uh, we, we wound up losing the game, but that was, you know, that was, you know, like I say, you, you learn from your mistakes and, and things, and that's what we did at the time. Okay. But it's, uh, you know, it's, I could, you know, it, it kind of flashed back from memory, you know, this, I was talking with a, a friend of mine, uh, Ray Williams, who uh, runs Allstate, uh, business in Easley, South Carolina, you know, he, you know, when I was reminiscing with him, you know, before we came on the air and uh, talking about different things and stuff and how, uh, you know, when he went back in those days, you, you would come to school and I told him I was going to tell this story that when you asked me about something about football that I didn't play football, I was a band director at the time. I, I was a uh, drum major. <laughs> and, Ray, and he was saying, "Oh no, don't tell him that. Don't tell him that." I said, "Well, I was a cheerleader. <laughs> I shot the cannon." <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right. So uh, after the Peach Bowl, what was the next bowl game you played in? Was it an Orange Bowl? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, you can talk about that experience. I think you guys played Nebraska. Well, see that? Yeah, we played Nebraska. We was also coming in. I can say that was me rebounding from the uh, with the environmental judges. So I was yeah. uh, still under the weather uh, that year. So I was sort of rebuilding my own body, so to speak. Uh, okay. But, but I was just glad to be there and be a part, uh, you know, of the team. And then I was fighting back, you know, to get myself back into shape and get back for the next two years after that, which we went nine one and one uh, the next two years. Who did y'all tie it against? Uh, it was we tied Georgia one year and, and uh, Boston College, I think it was. Cool. So you played against Herschel Walker, correct? Oh sure, yeah, mm -hmm. I played talk against. Of, talk uh, about tackling him and playing against Georgia since you guys have that game coming up this weekend? Well, I mean, yeah, being from Georgia, you know, that was like, you know, you know, Georgia won the national title of the year before we did. Okay. So I had to go home and hear that 
you know, from the Georgia fan base that's saying, you see what happened, you know, you know. <laughs> and, that, and so, and I, you know, I was not wanting it, you know, to hear that anymore. And I was loving that we, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Herschel is an outstanding player, but, you know, I played against, uh, oh, I think it's three or four different Heisman Trophy candidates, but I always put them on their ass. Yay. So, so uh, you played against uh, George Rogers, which was a it's Heisman George. winner. And I'll talk about him a little bit. What was the difference between him and Herschel a little bit? Uh, really, uh, Herschel might have had a little more speed at the time. George was George was more of a power runner. Uh, George was uh, matter of fact, George recruited me when I was in high school to come to Slater. Yeah, so I knew George from back then, and um, you know George is from Georgia, and uh, okay. so you know we became friends, and uh, from from that you know back then, you know once you know, you know, so that was uh, you know, I I don't hit them all, and like I say, I put them all on their butt. I let them tell. <laughs> yeah, I talk, I talk to George every now and then. You I do play, okay. Play, Hope all is well. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's he's doing. He's. I mean, he he looks more like a defensive lineman now than he does a running back. But you know that's what happens when you uh, sit around and eat chicken all day. Oh man! All right. <laughs> so let's let's fa- let's flash back a little bit. Let's talk about how you gave William Perry his uh, nickname, Refrigerator Perry. Let's talk about yeah. that. Oh, uh, well, you know, Frizz came in, which was been my sophomore year, uh, going into my sophomore year before I got sick. And it was his freshman year, and he was a phenomenal athlete. I mean, you, when you got 300-plus pounds and able to stun flat foot, dump a basketball, that was unheard of, so to speak, back yeah. in that day. So, uh, but we, you know, we, like I say, we all tightened it on the defense line. I, it happened – just by accident, you know. I mean, we all you get tired, you come back, and and we happen to be trying to get on the elevator all at the same time. And that was, you know, he blocking up, taking up the elevator. You know, a lot of some players might have been intimidated by him, but you know, you're just another man to me. You know, so so you know, it's like I push him out the way and said, "Look, you blocking the you know, blocking the door like a damn refrigerator." You know, so we kind of. Kind of winning with it from right then on, you know. So yeah, that was that was, uh, and it kind of stuck, you know, and it and it went on, you know. I was, you have your each team had some kind of uh, a character on it on it that kind of inspire you, other than just being, you know, the uh, I guess captain or the leader. Always you don't have that one that's in the background. It also is that behind the scenes leader. And that would have been me. Okay. Yeah. Well, we got some. Go ahead, KJ. Yeah, I want to talk about Ray Williams, man. I know he was a big time player. How how was it playing with him? Also. Well, you know, Ray Williams uh, was when he came. You know, I was leaving out of, at the time, but Ray was Ray was more of a baseball player. I mean, he he had some health issues right now that you you know you wouldn't be able to look at him and tell but he was an outstanding baseball player and he played uh he was a like a more of a uh when what you call it he was on offense he wasn't a receiver he was sort of like a slot back type receiver uh back then so I was always would pick with him you know he was a little maybe 145 150 pounds so you know <laughs> He, all he could do is run fast, so he wouldn't be in my line of sight, you know, unless I was running off the field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we got a little footage that we want to share with our, um, you know, guests. And for those who are watching, make sure you subscribe and like us on YouTube. Um, this is a little clip with you back in the day. Um, we'll probably take a little time out, and then we'll come right back and ask some questions, okay? All right, sounds good. No problem. All right, hold on. One, just stay right there. Don't move. Don't go anywhere. All right. I'll be here. <laughs> All right. All right.
Yes, sir. We're back. Right. So basically, you were talking about how you gave him his, uh, you know, nickname, and they were talking about, mm -hmm. I guess, uh, you know, your years playing there. Uh, you can. We already talked about that in, in uh, you know, conclusion. So um, after you left Clemson, did you try out for the NFL? Yeah, I uh, I left out my uh, senior the spring semester to try the USF league. Played a little with the uh, through that uh, with the Washington Generals and Jacksonville Bulls, and then uh, played uh, went through the uh, preseason with the uh, Cowboys that year, '84 to strike. Yeah, okay, cool. That, well, what, what, what was it like in the locker room with Tom Landry? Uh, it, it was good. Like I say, all that was, uh, it was, it was an experience, you know, sort of like, you know, eye opening experience, but you know, it, you learned that it was a business and stuff, you know, I knew it, but it's good. You, you knew yeah. some players also, and y'all see some players that you heard of, you know, the name Ed Tutal Jones, Danny White, and, you know, Tony Dorsett and stuff. Uh, so you, you know, you, you just kind of, you just, you live the moment. And you cherish them all. Was Herschel on the on the Cowboys that year? Huh? Was Herschel on the Cowboys that year? No, no, no. He had Herschel that at that time. Herschel was still with the USFL. Yeah, the Generals. You know, he was a five million dollar man at that time. Yeah, it was like him, Marcus Dupree, and someone else. I can't remember. Yeah, Mike Rozier. The uh, Craig James and um, yep. Marcus Dickinson from uh, LS, uh, SMU. Uh, you know, you, you had all those uh, marquee players that that at the time would have been in the NFL, but, you know, they was all over trying to start up that league, which was yep. good. Uh, so you got to meet, you know, different, like say, different players and people that you kind of had played against in the past and that you knew. So... It was, uh, like I say, it was an uh, eye-opening experience and it was an award uh, experience at the time. Cool, cool. So uh, what is your message right now, Ray, for the youth coming up um, on any level? Well, I would say, first of all, you have a plan B because anytime you put on that, uh, whether football, basketball, you get more people get hurt, you know, that you don't hear about in practices. More deaths occur that mm -hmm. you hear about. That might, I mean, sure somebody might get paralyzed in a game, and you hear about that name. But it's it's countless others throughout, you know, amateur sports that have injuries that's life threatening that happen to them. Yeah. So you have to have a plan B. So that starts at the beginning. That classroom, you have to get that classroom, and then the athletics. Everybody. I tell kids, you know, they say, well, I want to be an NFL. I want to be NBA. And I tell them if we outside, and I say, well, look at that tree. How many leaves on that tree? That's how many people competing for the same job that you're talking about. And only one of them is going to fall in the right place. So wow. you're going to have to be, have something else to fall back on than just being, you know, looking at that one thing. And it's, and you don't want to break their hopes and dreams because you want them to have that, but you also want them to have a plan B to have something to fall back on. And exactly. and, and so when you're at that crossroad, the strength of their faith in God shall see them through. It'll turn their stumbling blocks into stepping stones. There you go. Yeah. So any shout outs to any go ahead, KJ. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask him. Do we have any okay. shout outs or anything like that? Yeah, any, I just uh, all, all, um, all my teammates, uh, you know, I just wanna, you know, tell them hello, all the folks back, you know, that I played with in high school, all the ones I played with in college. It was also uh, you know, you know, to help me be the person that I am, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, we appreciate you coming on the show, Ray Brown. Oh, and I mean, Glad for y'all to have give me the opportunity, and I hope that you know y'all keep doing what you're doing, inspiring your young youth that's in, that's here in these you know the different podcasts that you have, and uh, I hope that it you know that let them ones know and and the ones who done play because you know sometimes you get the ones that you get out there in the real world, you lose a job, you 
you think the world is to an end, but you have to have this outlet where you can reach and call somebody, speak to somebody, because we're all athletes. We've been there, and we can all help each other. Yes, sir. And that goes right into our mission statement at the end of the show. We always say, KJ, it's not how you start. It's how you what? Man. It's how you finish. How you finish, man. So, That's right. Yeah. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe and like us on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, Deezer. Um, also, check out our merchandise store on Facebook. and You can get your apparel there or hit us up on DM on Instagram, and we'll make sure we get back with you. All right? Uh, until then, uh, next time, you guys, be safe with your mask. And just like we said, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. We would like to thank uh, our guest, Ray Brown, for coming on today. Um, thank you, appreciate Ray. all the words of encouragement and inspiration, and we'd love to have you back on, okay? Give me a call, fellas, anytime. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys, uh, you have a good evening. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Uh, okay. Peace.